Now we're going to use two guide curves to control the shape of this bottle. The bottle is almost identical to the last bottle you created. In fact, if you look at it from this angle, it looks identical to bottle one. When you turn the bottle 90 degrees, you can see that the sweep follows a different guide curve. Before we create the bottle, let's look at why we can't use this bottle to create it. The bottle we're going to create will have a path that's identical to this path and it will have a guide curve that's exactly like this one. If you recall, the guide curve controls the diameter of the circle, but it doesn't control the shape of the circle. I like the surface on the top of the bottle and I'll show you why this is important. Now click the section view command. Once you've done that, use the arrows to drag the plane along the axis of the bottle. This creates a cutaway of the bottle so that you can see the cross section anywhere along the axis of the part. As you might expect, the cross section is circular because the profile is a circle. In order to make the shape of the bottle we're going to create, the profile has to be an ellipse. Since an ellipse is constructed using two radii, we can use two guide curves to control both its size and its shape. Type the escape key to exit section view mode and then open a new part file. The first step is to create the path. So create a sketch on the front plane and then draw a line upward from the origin. Set the length of the line to 8 inches Confirm that the sketch is fully defined and then exit it. Now make a sketch for the first guide curve on the front plane. Draw a horizontal line roughly an inch and a half from the origin to the right. Use auto transition to draw a 90 degree arc and then draw a vertical line roughly 5 inches long. Draw the next arc and another arc. Draw a vertical line and then a horizontal line back to the path. Set the radius of the arc on the bottom right to half an inch the distance from the bottom of the arc to the top of the first arc to 6 inches and set the radius of this arc to 3 quarters of an inch. Now add an equal relation to the arcs. Set the distance between this line and the path to 3 quarters of an inch and set the distance between this line and the path to two and a quarter inches. When you're finished, the sketch should be fully defined. Now change the horizontal lines to construction lines. Exit the sketch and then set the view to an isometric view. The next step is to create a guide curve on the right plane. Click the sketch command and then select the right plane. Set the view to the normal view and then begin drawing the guide the same way you drew the first guide. Draw a horizontal line from the origin and then a quarter circle. This time draw a line upward about an inch. As you'll see in just a minute, this guide curve will have a chain of lines and arcs connected together to create a rather complicated profile. When you draw a complicated profile, you might want to break the construction of the profile down into smaller steps. Otherwise, lines and arcs can become tangled when you add relations and dimensions. We've drawn the first few entities in the profile and we're going to fully define the entities before we continue. Set the radius of the arc to half an inch. 
and then set the height of the line to 1 inch. Now add a dimension between the line and the path and set this dimension to 2 and a quarter inches. Now that the sketch is fully defined, we're going to use the line command to draw an arc on the end of this line. Type the L key to evoke the command, click the node, and then pass your pointer over the line. Now draw the arc. Draw another arc. Now draw a third tangent arc. and then draw the same arcs that were in the first guide. Now you might learn firsthand why you should break your sketches down into smaller steps. This chain of arcs can easily become tangled enough that you may want to redraw them. Tangling happens when you add relations and dimensions. You can drag some of the nodes to see what tangled geometry looks like. Sometimes when this happens, you can drag nodes to untangle the entities, but with arcs, you almost always need to redraw them or use the undo command. If you've tangled the arcs, click the undo command to untangle them. When you have a series of lines and arcs that can become tangled, add dimensions and relations just as you normally would. If they become tangled, Click the undo command and try something else. Start by adding a dimension to this arc. Set the radius to 2 inches. Now highlight these three arcs and then set them equal to each other. Add a dimension to this arc and set it to 3 quarters of an inch. Now set these arcs equal to each other. The arcs that end on this node need to end vertically, so the centers of the arcs need to be on the same horizontal line. Highlight the centers of the arcs, and then add a horizontal relation to them. The same type of relation is required for the arcs connected to this node. The arcs need to end horizontally. So add a vertical relation to the centers of the arcs. If all went well, you should be able to drag the top node down without tangling the arcs. Now rotate the view so that you can see both guide curves. This node and this node needs to be on the same horizontal plane, so select the nodes and then add a horizontal relation. Once you've added these dimensions and relations, you should be able to finish the profile. Set the view back to the normal view. Draw a line upward from the last node. And then horizontally back to the path. If the last arc is in tangent to the vertical line, add a tangent relation to them. Now add a 3 quarter inch dimension between the vertical line and the path. The last blue line is the horizontal line. Its size is defined and it appears that its location is defined. Whenever you can't tell how an entity is underdefined, try dragging it to see how it moves. Usually this will help give you the information you need to fully constrain it. It looks like we can move the line vertically, so we need to constrain its movement in this direction. Rotate the view slightly. The node on the end of the line is supposed to be constrained to the node on the top of the path. Select the nodes, and then add a coincident relation. Now that the sketch is fully defined, change the horizontal lines to construction lines.
Learning how to fully define sketches takes a little practice, but there are a couple of things you can do to help simplify the process. You can break the construction of the sketch down into smaller steps and add dimensions and relations that are defined by design parameters. For example, a design parameter for this bottle could be that the bottom of the bottle has to be flat, so a horizontal construction line was used on both guide curves. The OD of the bottle is twice the radius, so it's four and a half inches. This could be another design parameter. If you were designing a bottle like this, there should be a reason the OD is four and a half inches. Maybe the bottle has to fit on a specific shelf size, or maybe it has to fit a standard cup holder. These are examples of design parameters that guide you to specific dimensions. So we've applied them to our sketches. You also learned a valuable trick that helps you quickly determine how the line is underdefined. Simply drag it to see how it moves. Once you know how a line or arc can move, you know what you need to do to constrain its movement. Now that the sketch is fully defined, exit the sketch, and then set the view to the isometric view. The last step is to create the profile. Create a sketch on the top plane, and then open the ellipse command. With this command, you select the center of the ellipse and two radii. Select the origin of the sketch, and then the ends on the guide curves. It doesn't matter which end you select first. If either of the nodes on the ellipse doesn't have a coincident relation next to it, drag the node away from the guide curve, highlight both nodes, and then add a coincident relation. When you're finished, the sketch should be fully defined. Exit the sketch, Set the view to the isometric view, and then open the sweep command. Select the profile, select the path, and then open the guide curves option. Select a line or arc on both guide curves, and then type the inner key to create the sweep. Save the file under the name Bottle 2.